I think that speaks a lot maybe to some of the inflation mm -hmm. that we're seeing when the top three expenses are really kind of stuff you need more than want. Um, whereas the millennials might be on the opposite end of that spectrum, that travel, that leisure, right. that experience isn't necessarily a want, it's more of a need. And so both these, gen you know, both these generations are spending, but they're spending in different ways. What's going on, everybody? This is Matt Dixon, and with me in studio today... Justin Bruggeman. You guys are listening to the True Wealth Radio Show, where we are bringing you guys an awesome show today. Justin, this one was your kind of brainchild today, and I really am looking forward to seeing what you've got for us. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, today's show and kind of what listeners might have in store? Yeah, well, we can definitely get into that. But okay. first, we should probably, the deadline's coming up. Oh, what deadline are you referencing? The ta tax deadline. Uh, uh, is it Monday? Man, what the day 15th. is the 15th? I don't know what day is Yeah, that's, that's coming up pretty quick. I think yes. that is a Monday. Yes, and so any... IRA or Roth IRA contributions that need want to be made mm -hmm. need to be done prior to Monday. Yeah, let's try and get it done this week so that we're not um, stressing out over the weekend or pushing things right. out to a Monday. Let's try and get that done this week. So that's a good friendly reminder. Yes. You need to fund a retirement account. This is kind of, of IRAs yeah. and the max contribution that you can do is $6,500 in 2023. Unless you're over 50, then it's another $1,000 for a total of 7,500. Okay. Well, there it is. Um, is that all we've got for people? That, as that's, a big, okay. that's a big update. The, I, I mean, the like limits change next year, but yeah. You know. That we can... I feel like that's a pretty fair update for everyone. Um, but what about the main meat of the show yeah. today? What do, you, what do you got on your mind? So we deal with this all the time, but we don't necessarily compartmentalize it, I guess you could call it as different generations have different habits. Okay. And I don't know what even sprung me even looking at this, and it got me thinking of the different spending habits by generation mm -hmm. and how they change and what events they kind of went through that kind of molded those changes. And so it just got me thinking is, I wonder what the pros and cons they consider kind of like generation. As far as spending finance. and saving yeah, habits spending, go savings. based on kind of what age bracket you're in. Right. Because I mean, I'd venture to say that, you know, if you were part of that, like, I think the silent generation, right? Mm -hmm. That was somewhere in the 20s to the 40s. Um, yeah. If you're part of that generation, you might have a very different approach to spending and saving compared to someone who's a Gen Z, um, right. you know, person who's just kind of getting started on their financial journey. So I think this is definitely worth kind of walking through because as we look at spending and saving habits by, you know, generation, I think it might awaken people to maybe some of the areas that they are strong in versus mm -hmm. where they're weak in and uh, kind of open, open up and some And open up a little bit of understanding of the differences. Right. Which, I mean, full disclosure, people can possess all these qualities no matter what age right. you are. Right, so, yeah. So, it's not an end-all, be-all yeah. list. But, you know, there's a lot of events, I think, that have transpired over the years that have been part of the reason for certain generations being kind of the way that they are right. right like you know if you want to kind of start with the silent generation that you know we just mentioned that kind of what was it 1928 to like 1945 somewhere yes. in that range um you got to think there was some stuff that that generation went through a, that a major thing yeah I mean, when you look back at the Great Depression, that went from 1929 to 1930. Right. And, you know, I think about uh, like my grandpa, for example, he was born in 1933. So mm -hmm. that places him smack dab in the middle of, of this generation where it's like, hey, you might have been pretty young, but um, you lived through the Great Depression. Yeah. You know what that's like. And, you know, an economic downturn like that where you're 
mo- you know, most people at least were dealing with extreme poverty mm-hmm. and financial hardship for an extended period of time. Yeah, that that in, like my grandpa grew up on a cotton farm in right. Arkansas, right? And you know, I've heard the stories of well, we didn't have running water, so you had to go get the water. And mm-hmm. um, back then, you know, you got a lot of siblings most of the time, um, and so that that resource of food clothing shoes everything was pretty scarce and you're doing everything you can to make ends meet and when you grow up in a cycle like that i think it tends to shift your attitude towards we need to save and be responsible with what we have right and there's also another uh and this wasn't even something that you know we kind of wrote down or came up with but i've noticed this a lot especially from people during that generation it, it, there's a desire to hold on to stuff right. because when you don't grow up with anything, you reuse right. and recycle, you upcycle everything. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that because my grandpa is part of that, right? Like right. he always has the thing that you need. Like the stores can be closed and you have like a electrical outlet that goes out or whatever. Right. Like you can call him and he'll have an outlet sitting in a drawer somewhere yeah. and he knows where everything is. So super resourceful, yeah. especially, you know, for someone like myself. So yeah. I, I appreciate that generation. I mean lot. going through the Great Depression and World War Two, you know, is all in that same kind of generation. Yeah. yeah. And um which it does develop, you know, the financial stability um you know being frugal with their spending habits Mm -hmm. um and knowing how to stretch a dog right and i think home ownership is a big piece of that generation's kind of legacy you think back to housing it was you know by the numbers a lot more affordable during that time frame um land was being developed at a rapid rate and So land costs were pretty low. Um, Maybe some of the red tape and development costs might have been a little bit lower too. Um, And just, you look at the inflation adjustment to today's dollars and it's crazy. Um, We know that real estate was cheaper back then. And so a lot of that generation um, is really deeply rooted in home ownership. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of people kind of, I feel like, kind of got into the rental um, game that way too is as you know you pay off your house and you're looking for another investment right. opportunity real estate was a big one mm-hmm. um, and so i think that generation is also you know kind of big into the into the rentals so that would be i guess what we consider the pros right some of the cons talk to me about them what what are what are some of the areas where that silent generation maybe struggles in which i feel like some people will fall into all these no this is this is painting with a broad yeah. brush resistance right? to change okay um especially with technology and financial systems i mean mm-hmm. it was very different well yeah because you got to think you know the year 2000 rolls around for example this generation at that time frame, probably around 70 years old or approaching 70, late 60s, approaching 70, that's when the technology boom got real serious, right. right? Like everyone could figure out a flip phone, open it up, you know, type in a number. Um, technology, even in their 70s, wasn't a huge cornerstone of society. Yeah, we had our television and stuff, but um, the internet wasn't like on your phone and your iPad um the same way that it is today right and so like you said i think that is um one area where um that generation might struggle a little bit is just adapting to technology and learning how to use it for sure yeah and then the other was just limited retirement planning and it wasn't even limited access can you like expand so on like, that a little think bit? about how quickly you can get information now that you didn't sure. know. Right, you're a Google search away. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, which a lot of that generation, you know, in quotes pretty much, is they did a great job of saving. Right. But then they had no plan for the... What to do with the resources that they had. Right. Well, you even think about the stock market, right? <laughs> they remember the days where you could have ownership of a stock on paper. Not that you can't today, but 
Like right. there was like stock, stock certificates, yep. right? Like this was on paper. This wasn't just a click of a button. Right. I own something new and I just sold something. So it's just a really different world that we're living in. And sure, a lot of the of that generation has evolved and, and changed with the times, but it might be more difficult than a, you know, generation that's maybe born in the 60s or 80s or right. somewhere in that range. So um, healthcare, though, that's another big yeah. one. I mean, healthcare costs, especially for people who um, in that generation weren't really um, preparing financially the way others might have. Healthcare costs have gotten really expensive, oh, yeah. and that can be a really big financial burden right. in today's society. And it is for all generations. But. Right. So that's one. That's a blanketing yeah. statement. Like we're all kind of struggling with healthcare costs. Um, so should we move to baby boomers? You know, let's do it. We gave Silent Generation their shout right. out. What about the boomers? Well, what do you know, Justin? This is the post World War Two. Hence the name, baby mm-hmm. boomers. Right, and they went through the period of rack, or sorry, rapid economic growth, industrialization, suburbanization in many Western countries. Right, uh, and then fueled by government spending, technology advancements, and increased consumer demand. I think so that people were spending more money. Right, and the baby boomer generation gets the bad rap on that. Right, that's when the spending just went through the roof. And I think there's this um, kind of blame shift that I've seen recently where everyone's kind of pointing the fingers and being like, thanks for all of the, you know, the debt. And then they point to that generation. Um, I think they blame the millennials more than that. But yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. But they it was a generation which they were brought up by the silent generation through right. the Great Depression. So they still have a lot of this strong that financial stability the stability yeah. is how to stretch a dollar be disciplined but a they, little bit more innovation kind of crept right. into that generation yeah yeah for sure they often possess a lot of assets mm-hmm. a lot of home equity retirement savings just because that's how they were brought up right yeah and you know, you think about kind of just their habits I think they kind of that generation tends to be pretty loyal um, and mm-hmm. like they kind of trust a brand I've noticed too, where it's like, well, this is my thing and I stick with it because I know it, I like it and I'm loyal to it. And right. I think that's kind of a cornerstone of that generation as well. And then, you know, some of the little bit of maybe cons, I guess you could go through is they tend to be more conservative. Which In what way? Just kind of just across the board. Wise. Yeah. yeah. So it it can be that they're not willing to take the risk that could maximize their return. I guess. Sure. And so that, which it can and cannot be a con. So they're not taking unnecessary risk, but maybe not enough risk to say mm-hmm. outpass, outpace inflation or something like that. Yeah, that generation, I think, too, um, I know this is painting with a broad brush, but they're, they're kind of reluctant on some of the discretionary spending, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Because they tend to be savers more than spenders, um, they have a hard time sometimes going out and just saying, you know what, I'm going to treat myself, I'm going to do this thing, I'm going to reward myself for all this hard work. And so this is a hard-working generation. And they're the type that put their boots on, get to work, work hard, save, take care of their family. Mm -hmm. Um, But oftentimes it's a struggle to step back and say, all right, let's let's reward myself. Right. And discretionary spending boosts economic growth. Right. Yeah. You have all the money, but you keep it in your pocket and it kind of stalls the economy a little bit. Yes. Um, That's an interesting one. Well, Justin, we're running long on this segment. So We've got a lot more generational stuff to cover, but let's take an obscene profit break. All right, everybody, welcome back to the True Wealth Radio Show, where we hope you are having an awesome start to your week. It's a great Tuesday, Justin. We left our listeners off kind of talking about all these different generations, their spending habits, their saving habits. Hopefully you're over there like, hey, that's me. Um, But 
You know, I've got an interesting one for you. When we left off, we had already covered the silent generation, Mm -hmm. the baby boomers. We're getting into some of these other generations. I want you to take a guess at um, what generation out of all of these generations is spending the most amount of money per year. So average expenses, what, how much money is going out the door and what generation is the big spender? Well, I don't remember the number, but I remember you telling. No, granted, these numbers are dating back to 2021. So right. it's been three years, but. Um, so, and I would assume it's the Gen X. So the mm-hmm. born between 1965 and 1980. You are correct. Gen X. So if you were born between 1965 and 1980-ish, in that mm-hmm. range, you fall into this generation. You've been nicknamed the sandwich generation. <laughs> right. You want to know why? Um, because of the fact that uh, you're sandwiched oftentimes in between supporting both uh, aging parents and your kids. Mm-hmm. So this generation is known for that. You know, you've got your baby boomer parents who you might be needing to help out, right. but you've also got kids that are maybe in college or right. struggling and not able to move out of your house for whatever reason or whatever the Stop case got may be. too expensive. So, yeah, exactly. So you are helping both sides of the family out financially right. um, oftentimes. And this generation is spending the most amount of money per year. You want to take a guess at what that annual expense was in 2021? Oh, 70, 70,000. It's actually in the 80s. Oh, wow. Back in 2021, before this huge inflationary run, they were spending an average of $83,000 a year. You compare that to the next highest spending generation, which is, any guess? Oh, we already kind of went back through and said that the baby boomers were a little not learning to spend. So millennials. So we'll go Good guess. It is. It is millennials. They're spending an average of $69,000 a year. But that's a pretty big gap going from six, uh, mm-hmm. from 83000 down to 69000 as the next largest spending um, generation. I would have not guessed that. I would have guessed that it would have been the baby boomers that are spending more than the millennials. But when I see the numbers on paper, it actually makes more sense because you look at spending habits. Millennials are really, I know I'm jumping out of order here. Mm -hmm. Millennials are really known for wanting to chase an experience rather than save for their future. And um, instant gratification. It's an instant gratification group. Yeah, it is. And so we are watching millennials spend at a very alarming rate compared to their you know, the ratio of savings. It's a little bit of the cycle just of the life that they're going through. So Chasing that Instagram image. Well, yeah, the no, keeping up with the Joneses. Like the baby boomers typically, which again, this is completely. Right. Generalizing. That generalizing. That's okay. Typically We're, had children at younger ages. Too. Okay. Right. And the millennial generation tend to wait. That's Longer true. in life. And so. What what's the reasoning what you, for spending kids mm-hmm. <laughs> or parents? Well, that's true. And yeah. so, and by delaying, you know, and then people of the you know Gen X generation are probably in their what would you call that between forty five and sixty. I don't know the actual number on it. Is you know they're taking care of both, and then they had kids younger, and then the millennial generation waited. And so it just kind of has this kind of cross of where your kid's at and where your stage is at in life and where you spend the most money. Right. You know, I, going back to Gen X a little bit, we were kind of chatting about, you know, how they operate, what their expenses look like. It's interesting when you start breaking it down by category, though, because you would think that a lot of that is a lot of their spending is just on stuff, right? Right. Um, like real discretionary type things. but. When you break down the top three categories, it's surprising a little bit. Housing, Housing. healthcare, oh. and insurance. Wow. So you look at that and you're like, wait a minute, where's that money going? It's kind of the stuff that you got, like you need housing, right? Like you need healthcare and you need insurance in case stuff goes wrong. So I think that speaks a lot maybe to some of the inflation mm-hmm. that we're seeing when the top three expenses are really kind of stuff you need more than want. 
Um, whereas the millennials might be on the opposite end of that spectrum. That travel, that leisure, right. that experience isn't necessarily a want. It's more of a need. And so both these, gen- you know, both these generations are spending, but they're spending in different ways. So wow. it's kind of an interesting comparison. Yeah, it is. So they consider they, quote, unquote, <laughs> Gen X as the most well-rounded approach to spending and saving. But that makes sense. It, it's interesting. You look at that silent generation and the further we get away from it, uh-huh. you watch the behavior drift radically yeah. in the opposite direction, right? Um, it went from ultra conservative, saving a ton of money to the baby boomers that were kind of, you know, they were still big time savers and we're seeing that right now with right. their spending being low. Um, but they were a, a little bit more aggressive in their spending because of, you know, we saw that with the national debt and everything right. that rose during that time. Um, but then Gen X comes in, they're the biggest spenders, and millennials are right on their heels. But right. You also got to we'll think catch them in no time. if the millennials were making more money, right? maybe they would actually outpace on spending. Yeah, um, so we have shifted from a generation or like a country, I guess, of of savers and fiscally responsible mm-hmm. people to more of a YOLO type mentality where it's like, well, you only live once. Let's blow through this money. Right. And that makes me nervous, especially as a financial advisor, right? Who's looking at this and saying like, how do we structure things for the future? And then you see kind of an unraveling of that behavior of being an investor and more right. of a, a spender. And it really kind of translates to is, the events that happened during those times. Yeah, we should talk more about that. I mean, we talked about the Great Depression for the silent generation. We mm-hmm. talked about a little bit of that World War II economic boom that right. caused some of that spending for the baby boomers. We didn't actually talk about the kind of stagflation and the oil crisis that was happening in the 70s because that actually really did shift some of the behavior, I think, for that boomer generation. Right where you're looking at um, really high inflation rates. Like, I mean, inflation in the 70s was wild, and they lived through that. we're seeing it again. Yeah, and that impacted a lot of different areas. Like, I mean, the job markets, the wages, consumer spending. So that did play a huge role for the baby boomer Mm -hmm. generation. But I think we've mainly been focusing about Gen X. You want to talk about maybe some of the stuff that was happening during that generation that would have impacted maybe some of the ways that that generation approaches money? Yeah. October 19th, 1987. What happened on that day? The Dow fell 22% in one day. You and I are over here freaking out any day that the market's <laughs> down 2 or 3%. And we're like, what just happened? You know, I can't even imagine um, going through that. Which, it didn't trigger a recession. No, it was a short term event to which okay. I don't even I mean, I was literally Just 40 born. days old at yeah. this point okay. or something like yeah. that. So I was not there for it. I've read about but it. But it so. shakes your confidence yeah. as an investor, right? Like everything that you've seen and known, you know, is relatively decent up until the point to where your port- you check your portfolio. You wake up and you're like, why do I have 20 something percent less money today? Yeah. So that actually, you know, trauma, a big event like that can really shape and affect how you operate moving forward. Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe it did cause some people in that generation to say, I don't trust it. A little anymore. bit gun shot. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I'm going to invest in other asset classes or maybe right. I'm not going to invest at all. Maybe I'm going to scale this thing back and spend a little bit more. Right. Interesting. Um, you know, then the savings and loan crisis in the 80s and 90s. Um, you know, collapsing in some savings and loan associations, Mm -hmm. which government bailout, which sounds familiar, doesn't it? uh, Bailing out, (laughs) uh yeah, uh-huh. But, uh, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, we saw a little bit of shakeup in confidence in banks. I mean, you just kind of hinted at it when we had a couple banks collapse here recently within the last two years. Has it been two years? Is it three Silicon, I mean, wasn't it Silicon oh, Valley wow. Bank? I don't remember the date. It's been, you know, a little while now. But I remember talking with people um, even right after that happened. And even though it was just a bank or two, there was a lot of people saying, hey. Yeah, a lot of people panicked. I don't, 
you know, and you start hearing the conversation of gold, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, these type of events make a really big difference in how people feel about investing. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah. it's definitely worth especially doing. now because I mean the gen that Gen X generation where they're age at now mm -hmm. they're at the peak e earning year. I mean they've got the thirty. Right. 30, the 20, 30 years, years experience, experience, they can demand that higher wage. Yeah. Right. And with that does come some extra spending. The oh, whole expression for, of like, you spend what you make. Yeah. Like, it's and, real you know, for it, most people. It is a very hard thing when you get raises and things like that just to not spend that and beyond. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we try to even try to create kind of the habit is if you get a raise, take a portion of that and save it. Right. Because if you don't, if you're not used to it in your lifestyle, then you may not spend it. So it increases your savings rate and increases an emergency fund for when stuff does go south. And that Gen I, X generation is in the sweet spot. I got an interesting one for you. Okay. We, I mean, we talked about the top three categories for Gen X. Yeah. And where are they spending it? We talked about housing was in the top three. You would... The total percentage of your income that you're spending on housing. So mm -hmm. Gen X is spending 31.7% of their total okay. you know, budget on housing, which that seems actually kind of high. To I me. think that would actually be considered kind of L low, like lending average. Okay. No, it's right. typically between 30 and 35%, I believe. Right. So, and I bring this up to say out of all of the generations, even though they're in the top three, Right. Like if you look at mm -hmm. the categories, that's housing's top three. Other generations, all of them are spending a higher percentage on housing than yeah. Gen X. Gen X is actually at the lowest percentage. Um, but I think like their income's said, the highest because their the income's the highest. You know what generation's actually getting hit the hardest? Probably the newest, whatever they You would think them. it would be Gen Z. OK. And I would have assumed that. But slightly edging them out is the silent generation. And I okay. think well, it makes sense when you really break it down yeah. because inflation, like back then, if you're earning a dollar an hour or two dollars an hour as a wage, right, it's really hard to compensate for what they're having to right. spend now um, adjusting that. It, they're at 37.3. Wow. So, okay. and Gen Z is at 37.1. So, basically a tie but yeah. the silent generation still struggling even more than gen z when it comes to percentage of um expense towards housing very very interesting I think, stuff i think the silent generation is due for a break they've been through a lot <laughs> they have they have and then you, you know i i love these categories because it really tells a story right. but if you look at entertainment um baby boomers and gen x are actually spending the most on yeah. entertainment as Which a percentage. Wild. That's wild. That is. So spending is, is starting to shift for, uh, for these generations. So when we get back, we're going to start talking a little bit more about those millennials. All right, everybody, we are back from the break, and we are talking about all these different generations, spending habits, good habits, bad habits, and everything in between. Justin, we left off introing the millennials, mm -hmm. to which... We kind of fall into this category. We most definitely, by definition, fall into this category. By, yeah, by age range we do, yes. but maybe not by <laughs> behavior. So, like I said at the beginning of the show, we are painting with a very broad brush. So, unfortunately, we got to cover this generation. Mm -hmm. We're lumped in there, so let's break it down and talk about what, what this generation yeah. is up to. Well, why don't we start with which when we talk talking about millennials people born between 1981 and 1996 okay um and what they the the events financial events that happened during that same time period the dot com bubble from 2000 2002 yeah the market lost so much so fast right like everyone was investing in these internet based companies and mm -hmm. it didn't really matter what your earnings were let's just invest in it because the internet is the next big thing and it's going to take over everything. Right. There was a severe um, <laughs> correction in yes. the market during that time. So, yeah, and that's a big one. The Great Recession, they call it, from two, 
the basically the 08 housing crisis yep. yeah and um well housing collapsed uh banks were kind of feeling it uh yeah. everything bad lending, everything yeah know, bad not, lending it, it was a mess right mm -hmm. um that definitely changed the, the way a lot of millennials look i yeah. think at investing because think about it 2008 i'm getting out of high school and graduating and going into college mm -hmm. how many people our age had a college savings account that might have been in the market and you, oh, yeah. you are about to go to college and guess what your savings is wiped out what's really amazing though is how oblivious you were to it all because even you think mm -hmm. is, i mean 2000 2007 to 2009 right I was in college, yep. studying finance, and you probably and it still weren't even, it, wasn't even brought up during really? my classes, things like that. Yeah, they were just kind of skipping too, over it. Yeah, yeah. it's just I swear it's like they didn't know what was going on, so they're just like we just won't talk about it for a while. Yeah, let that let it ride into the history books before right. we touch the hot stove. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, and it's just this you you don't know, and when you're kind of looking at these kind of age groups, is even. You know, we're in this generation, but, you know, 2000, 2002, you only remember it from what you've read, not even really what you've kind of gone through other than the new technology that was coming right. out. Millennials got a really weird introduction into <laughs> adulthood, <laughs> right? Because we're on the cusp of this huge technology boom. And I think we were the best positioned generation for it because, like, we saw the tail end of not having that big technology piece like we grew up right. right in that sweet spot where it's like well it doesn't like it's not fully ingrained in our dna we didn't grow up with an ipad right like we grew up riding a bike and doing all the things that you know kids should be doing yeah. and now uh, i have to ask my 10 year old how to work an ipad thing. but but the chances of you figuring it out if you want to much greater right. chance than your parents just naturally right. figuring it out so yeah, we you really embrace did technology better hundred percent and you look at kind of where the job market is uh, a lot of a lot of some of those higher paying jobs are really focused in in big tech right mm -hmm. um, not all of them but that's an area where you know digital marketing technology all of those those kind of categories it's weird though because you know you hear like gig economy Terms like that get thrown out. Mm -hmm. The job market for millennials is, I feel like, different maybe than for prior generations where it's like, hey, you want to come work at this startup company? We're going to pay you a ton of money right. um, and a lot of turnover, a lot of trying to find uh, your sweet spot. And why? Why, are, why is there such high competition there? I think you look at like where wages are in comparison to where they were in the past. Like what does the dollar buy you for this right. generation? Not as much. And yeah. housing's more expensive and your student loan debt is more expensive. And so you come out of school and maybe you have a lot of debt. Maybe, you know, you're trying to buy a house. The wages aren't there for it. So you see a lot of millennials maybe still, uh, or were at some point living with parents longer. Right. A lot of different things going on with that generation, um, and they tend to pri prioritize experience over yeah. asset. Absolutely, like it's a bigger traveling this is, social experience. This is where I point my finger at social media, and I'm like, "Hey, be careful of that thing," mm -hmm. because it is designed in nature to make you look and say. Well, look at what this other person is doing and look at all of these things that could be part of my life, but they're not. Right. And that that whole keeping up with the Joneses thing, I feel like for the millennials is a very, very challenging obstacle. And you've got to really work hard to shift your mindset, especially when all of your peers are doing the same right. thing. All right, you know, so that's, I mean, that's a tough one. They're considered to be more socially conscious and environmentally aware. Yeah. Um, which barf. We're not. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, give me some mouthwash. <laughs> Driving to demand for ethical products and services, things like that. Yeah. 
Um, they want to they want to know the name of the cow that's being served. Yeah. You know, like what 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 was the name of this cow that's in front of me on on my plate as as, as a ribeye? And it's like, oh gosh, please. I'm, please yeah, stop. I mean, a lot of the the challenges in the millennial kind of generation, common ones, I guess, would be you know student loan debt, stagnant wages. Is there's not enough. <sighs> I guess well, individualization on some things because everything's done technology. I, I look technology. at it, it is is wage are wages growing at the same rate as cost of living, right? Like are wages inflating with inflation? And if they're not, there's a pinch point. Yeah. yeah. And it could even be the value of education, what it was twenty years, thirty years ago versus we did. now. No, we I talk about this with friends all the time. I, this, and this is coming from someone right. who went to college, right? Yeah, me too. I look at it and I'm like, was it worth it? For what you spent, what did you get? And mm-hmm. I, it's my personal belief that it wasn't. It wasn't worth the spend. It wasn't worth the four years that it took to get the degree where I could have been earning a wage. Right. And I think it's worth even less now than it was when I was in school because I look at the cost. I've done it. I've looked back and I'm like, well, I know what I paid. What is someone paying today? And I'm right. like, that's crazy. Um, especially going straight to a four-year university instead of using a community college to save money for half of it. I'm I, like, well, this doesn't pencil. I did it one year and I came back. I'm like, did you? I can pay less, like a quarter of the price. Yeah, you're buying an experience if you go yeah. to those four years straight out of the gate. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You're yeah. paying for an experience. Well, I mean, if on scholarship, things like that. Yeah, then... there's there's exceptions. You got a full ride to a four year university. Go do it. Yeah. Right. And but, enjoy yourself. Yeah. Have fun. But man, oh man, uh, and I'm not even convinced that the quality of the education is any better, you know, because I can think back to, um, you know, going to a community college, right? I had maybe a class size of 20 to 30 people in it. And then I can think back to doing some entry level classes at the university where there's 200. Yeah. And I'm in a, telling in you, a stadium, the, the education was more difficult at the community mm. college. It was tougher and they expected a lot more out of you. I'm... I'm just throwing the red flag on the four years. Like, hey, this is a money-making scheme. But, Justin, we've got one more generation left to Ooh. cover. But we have to take our last obscene profit break. When we get back, we are going to cover Gen Z. All right, everybody, we are back. And on the last leg of the True Wealth radio show, where maybe we saved the best for last? I don't know. We're too early to tell. Yeah, um, exactly, because... We've been talking about all these different generations and all the money spending habits, but we haven't talked about everyone's favorite topic right now, Gen Z. Justin, what? give me one thing that you want to, to say about Gen Z. What's one thing you want to bring up? They're growing up during an interesting time. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, mean, te- with every- I mean, they grew. these are the tablet babies. They grew up on the tablet. Going from, you know, tablets was a new norm, Mm -hmm. even video game consoles, which is kind of funny. I've shown my son videos of like what we used to play and Uh, graphics are very different (laughs) than what they used to be. But we just, I mean, living through the COVID pandemic or growing up through that, because I mean, even the missed education that some of the kids have had. Ooh, good point. um, And I mean, even right now, this is the year... The kids are graduating right now miss their freshman year. Right. Pretty much. That's I mean, wild all to online. think about, yeah. And so we don't even know really the effects that that has on yet until later. Uh, I'll give Gen Z some credit because everyone wants to poke fun. Um, I do think that this generation is really entrepreneurial, right? Yeah. Like they are always looking to try and find an innovative way to make money or to maybe start their own kind of business or gig they're they're willing to take risk Mm -hmm. um public risk oh yeah (laughs) um it's kind of like no shame like we don't care if we fail no one's judging us we're just gonna go do it and we don't care what anyone thinks Mm -hmm. um and there's a lot of grit there um but i think on the flip side of that you also got to look at the fact that with that is some negatives right like 
I, I think that this generation has some limited financial experience um, and just a, maybe a lack of knowledge where they're more susceptible to, you know, maybe some scams, making financial pitfalls. They have a lot of big ideas, mm -hmm. but they don't really know how to execute on it because they just were never taught, I think, in a yeah. lot of in a lot of regard. And so a lot of big swings and big misses. Well, and a majority of their time is spent on electronics. Yeah. Which is a way to get, that puts you as a target for, mm -hmm. right. you know. Scams. Scam. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of scams out there. And unfortunately, you look on the internet, there, how many times have you seen the get rich quick right. thing being advertised? And so, you know, you look at this generation and they're, they're chasing that. And I mm -hmm. think the term passive income has been thrown around way too many times because I've heard so many um, Gen Z kids talking about, well, you know, I'm going to get rich and I'm going to do it this way and it's going to be super passive and I'm not going to have to work very hard for right. it. It is kind of a lazy generation and I hate to mm -hmm. throw rocks, but it's like, but that's what happens when you're raised in front of a screen, right? Yep. Like, look at the studies, like the amount of... Uh, like artificial kind of ADHD that I think is generated right. from those screens. You can look at the studies, you take the device away and you make them engage with other things. A lot of the times that reverses its, its course. And so when you have a generation that's just so deep in the belly of the internet, the screens, the social media, mm -hmm. the pressure from society to get somewhere. Right. And, you know, you've got to figure out what you want to do and you got to do it now because if you don't, you're just not going to make it. There's so right. much pressure on that generation that I think it's really, you know, causing some issues. Anything else you want to kind of talk about as far as Gen Z is concerned? I mean, they've gone through some stuff. Yeah, um, it's just, they were it's, on the coattails of that same uh, financial crisis yeah that you know we experienced in 2008 a lot of them faintly remember that but i can think of one other big one that they went through and you mentioned it already covid mm -hmm. covid was i mean we look look at the numbers depression was you know sky high um, people were trapped indoors they weren't being able to compete in some of their sporting events at their schools they weren't around their friends they were right. locked up what a weird deal that they're going through it really is, and it's just we don't know the effects of it yet. No, we don't. And, I mean, the They're one thing with, still. you know, the Gen Z generation especially is they are very tech savvy. They are. And they can get information moved from one place to another very quickly that would take me a lot longer. Yeah. And so it'll depend on how they kind of channel what information they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Is asking the right questions and how to be financially stable later in life and learning from all the other generations this because is, they're still here. You know, there is still the silent generation is still living. It spooks me how much Gen Z is going to be affected by AI. That's mm -hmm. the one, that's the big question mark for me. As we kind of turn our brains off and turn chat GPT on, right. what, is, what does that do? And is this generation able to overcome it? Because maybe they can. Maybe they can be independent thinkers that vet that right. and say, well, it said this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think through this and, and apply my own logic. Right. Maybe they can't break over that hurdle. I don't know. Like you said, it's too early to tell. But... Um, you know, it will be interesting to see what the future holds. Yeah, and kind of the cons that they're kind of going through is education costs. Uh, yep. Extremely expensive. Job market, especially now, is they want, you know, they're trying to, they want unemployment to increase. Right. And these kids are trying to go well, in and get... And a, and a lot of these, these kids in that Gen Z bracket aren't really willing to work. Right. And they it, and if they are, they really want a ton of money for their labor. It's a weird concoction. But, Justin, we're running out of time. We so, are. Don't talk, forget tax deadline. Tax deadline is coming April up. April yeah. 15th. And what if they want to get a hold of us? You can give us a call. 541-375-0898. Or, or shoot us an email. Info at littlejohnfs.com. Or just visit our website. Littlejohnfs. Or walk in and say hi. Because yeah. that's always fun, too. So. 
Little John Financial bringing you the show. We're wrapping things up. Catch us next week to, uh, at 4 o'clock here on 1240 and 93.9 FM. KQEN, have a great rest of your week.